What's up guys, I'm Johnny Phantom, and I'm here to talk to you again about Pokeballs. So, I've done two videos so far discussing the theory and the mechanics behind a Pokeball and how it doesn't actually work. And my inner Sheldon came out with the whiteboards and all that stuff, and I had another whiteboard that I forgot to bring into the office, so that math never got shown. So today we're going to be talking about pressure, and I do have the whiteboard here, I promise you, I forgot about it, I was going to talk about it at that video, so I was going to add something else to that video as well, and I forgot about that, so now I'm going to do those in this video and make this part 3, and if I did this in the other video, it would have been a lot longer, anyway, without further ado, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, Ring that bell so you don't miss another video because I post a video three times a week and I have a ton of great content on here. Theories about Disney, Pokemon, Star Wars, One Piece. I even do playthroughs on awesome games. So go check out the rest of my channel. And without further ado, let's get into it. In the past, uh, part one and part two, we discussed the theory of quantum mechanics and how much energy is needed to compress a Pokemon into a small Pokeball. And you would need more power than the sun itself in order to do that. So the math doesn't work. The only way that would work is if you had some kind of like arc reactor or um, maybe even like a small condensed hydrogen collider if that's even possible probably not because hydrogen collider is very dangerous and you know semi molecules together and you could blow it up either way if you want to look more at those theories and more at that math go check out part one and part two today we're going to be talking about pressure so just for the heck of it I'm trying to figure out how much pressure is actually involved inside a pokeball i did a couple of equations i did the ideal gas law I will deal with uh, pressure. Uh, so that's PV equals NRT, um, which basically stands for pressure times volume equals the amount of substance times the ideal gas constant times temptation. The ideal gas constant is calculated in moles. Moles is a unit of measure, remember that from chemistry, but I'm not getting into that. So, the first thing we have here is PV equals NRT. So, to the Earth's volume, which is 4.2 times 10 to the 24 cubic centimeters times, so that's the volume that we're going to play with, just to, just to see that. And then we take 8.314 moles. The average temperature of a Pokeball would be about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Being that it's a metal sphere out in the sun, inside would be about 50 degrees on an average day, which is 283.15 Kelvin. So if we take PV equals 4.2 times 10 to the 24 times 8.314 moles, sorry, 4.2 times 10 to the 24 cubic centimeters times 8.314 moles times 283.15 Kelvin. Our PV equals 8.084 times 10 to the 26. The amount of energy in watts according to that pressure. So we have watts equals pressure delta T. We need to figure out how much acceleration goes from so the delta basically stands for change so you have pressure change in in order to figure this out we need to figure out the actual pressure and pressure is also going to be so pressure equals the force of something divided by the area so the force is going to be is going to be measured in speeds of seconds now we need to figure out how long it takes to get the pokemon into this pokeball if you watch any clip of a trainer saying 
you know, Pikachu return, Squirtle return, whatever it may be. I'm going to throw a clip here right now. It takes about 10 seconds. Okay. So the acceleration is 10 seconds. And now we need to find area of this, which is area equals 4 times pi r squared. So we take 4 times 3.14 times 1.25 squared. So the area is 19.63. Okay. So now we take, okay, so for force, we need to also calculate um, the speed per ounce. So we have to times 10 seconds times 10 seconds, 211 ounces, which is the average weight of a Pikachu. Area, area, area. P equals force divided by area. So you have 10 times 211. So 10 seconds times 211 ounces divided by 19.63, which is the area that we found. So the pressure itself is 174.48. That's ounces per second. 107.48 ounces per second. So it takes 6.6888 pounds per second to compress into that Pokeball. Pretty interesting. Now, we're going to find the amount of energy that, that pressure would take in order to suck in a Pokemon into the Pokeball. In order to find that, we calculate into joules. Now, to find the joules, you take the P2 minus P1 times the volume. And P2 is the second pressure P1 is the visual pressure, so you do the difference in pressure. How did I get this math? I did this in the middle of the night and trying to figure out, okay, but according to this drawing here, I have 0.82 pounds per inches squared minus 14.7 pounds per inches squared times 8.18 which 8.18 is the volume of the Pokeball. So according to this, it would be negative 13.87 times 8.18, which would be negative 113.528 joules. So real quick, this is me from the future. Um, I was editing this video and I realized I made a mistake. Uh, so P2, I took the Earth's atmospheric pressure at sea level and subtracted it from P1, which is the pressure that we got from our equation here. Uh, so I have to kind of redo some math here uh, because I made a mistake. So, so in order to find the energy produced with this pressure, we need to find the difference in pressure from the pressure P2 to pressure P1. Now, P1 is going to be the pressure inside the pokeball right p1 stands for the first pressure p2 stands for the second pressure so basically you're going from p1 pv uh p1 is what pressure you started with and p2 is what pressure you're going to so you're subtracting what you're going to to what you started with to find the difference in that pressure um, this is where i made a mistake in the video but P2 is going to be what we started with. It's actually going to be the Earth's pressure. Okay? Because we're going from the Earth, you know, Pokemon being in the wild, being shrunk down into a ball. So the P2 is going to be the pressure inside the ball. P1 is going to be the pressure of the atmosphere itself. 14.7 pounds per square inch. Okay? So our P1 is... 14.7 pounds per square inch. If I convert the pressure that we got before, which is the 107.48, 107.48, I did the math wrong. Uh, if you looked at the chart before, uh, I had 0 0.082 pounds inches squared. Don't know where I got that. But if I convert the 107.48 ounces per 
inch squared into pounds per square inch, I get 6.718 pounds per square inch. And now we take out the calculator and do 6 point minus 14.7 and we get negative 7.98 times that by a volume which again is the 8.8.18 okay however when you do the math um i just did on a calculator yes i do get the number negative 7.98 however because you have pounds per square inch pounds per square inch yeah i found a calculator that put in the things here so initial volume is going to be guys okay, so with the converter thing compute meters um so meters let's just do that keep everything simple because earth's atmosphere comes up as pressure pounds per square inch but the calculator i found doesn't show that yeah either way um math doesn't work um, even if I can get the calculator to work properly, you will still get that difference in volume, which then would create the negative joules energy, which you can't have negative energy. Uh, the joules is measured in energy that is produced, not taken away. So therefore, you can't have negative energy, but you need negative energy in order for the Pokeball to work. Uh, back to the original video. You cannot have negative energy. You cannot have negative joules. It doesn't work. Now, if we converted that equation around, because we're going from high pressure to low pressure, although this pressure P2 to P1 is the math, and therefore it doesn't work but let's just say hypothetically you know because we're scientists at all say hypothetically if we could convert the pressure around the other way what would it be so we're going to do 14.71 14.71 minus point Eight two equals thirteen point eight nine times eight point one eight. Yeah, so just basically convert that negative energy into positive energy, and we hundred thirteen point five two eight <laughs> joules in order to compress the pressure of the volume inside the pokeball. I haven't been in college in years. I did those equations in college. I don't know if the math is correct. So comment down below if the math is correct. Either way, it was fun to just try to figure out, you know, how much pressure and how much, how, like, how the Pokeball works. It was fun to, you know, think of it that way. Um, comment down below and we'll discuss it more. Like, let's discuss how this actually works. Because I'm just interested. The other question I have is, who invented the Pokeball? You know, who, what mad scientist in the Pokemon world created this thing that breaks down the Pokemon into digital data, destroys the original copy, and then recreates it into a digital world, essentially, that has the same memories and everything else as the original form? What mad scientist turned Pokemon into Digimon? Well, Bulbapedia says, now Bulbapedia, if you don't know, is like the wiki of Pokemon. Now, there's a few different things here. If you look up, it says, Devon Corp of Silvco created the creation of the modern Pokeball. Okay, which is this one. Professor Westwood of Celadon University developed the Pokeball, the original Pokeball in 1925. And it is said that he used uh, Apricorns back in the day for the Pokeball to catch it. So what people do before 1925? Just not catch Pokemon, just tame them as you would. You know, just befriend them and it is what it is. 
And how did Pokemon fit inside Apricorn? Now, this is on Bulbapedia. And we do know that the Sovco exists and all that stuff. But you don't hear of Professor Westwood anywhere else in the story. They don't mention it. They don't discuss this. They don't talk about this in the story. It's just, here's your Pokeball. Go catch Pokemon. They don't explain how it works or who started it in the games you hear about the apricorn thing but that's about it they don't discuss how this actually works or who actually started it or what happened before so my question to you is how do you think the pokeball works do you think it's a matter of compressing the sun into a tiny little sphere do you think it's some kind of digital quantum uh, breakdown non clone effect. Do you think it's just magic? Do you think that it's some kind of arc reactor that pulls them in there and then there's like a little um, barbecue in there so Charmander can make s'mores like in this picture? Or do you think it's really just particles of data broken down inside there? Do you think that what do you think? And how do you think Pokeballs were created? How, who do you think invented them? What do you think happened before Pokeballs were invented? Let me know your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, comment down this video. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe button. Go check out my merch store. I got a ton of great designs. And I got more designs coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. And if you want a free shirt, go check out my Patreon page. Hit that join button on YouTube. Support me. Anything helps. So I continue making cool videos like this. And discussing inner Sheldon. And having whiteboards all over my office. I don't do that just because. Well, that was fun. Just thinking about it on my own. It's just. And I was like. Wait, 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 wait. Math, 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 math. So it was fun. So forget that. But no. Definitely, I don't do it just for me. I do it for you. I want to share my fun nerdiness with everyone else in the world. So there you go. Let's talk nerd. Let's talk fandom. See you guys next time. Before you go, make sure you check out that video. And that video.